Okay, so welcome back to the eighth video in the Haskell series. And this is going to be part two of our three part series, basically going into syntax in functions. And uh, today I'm going to go through uh, mostly uh, pattern matching, but um, I'm also going to show you uh, two little neat tricks that can be useful. And uh, one of them is actually very useful. Uh, so let's start with the first example. Uh, we're basically going to have uh, let's name it first car, uh, which is basically going to take a string and it's going to output a string, but um, it's basically going to have uh, the first car uh, of our string um, inside of the answer. You'll see when I get there. So uh, the way that we would use pattern matching, uh, um, um, which is uh, a bit different from guards. Um, in the last video, uh, I showed you guards where I basically just named a variable here. Then I uh, did the guard uh, and then I condition. But uh, in this case, uh, we're actually going to pattern match uh, for an exact value on x. So uh, in this case, uh, let's say that um, if, um, if x now is an empty list, so let's just do this. So uh, here, uh, x uh, would basically be this empty list. Um, basically, um, instead of having a variable there, uh, um basically just type out uh, what we want it to be for this case and uh, then we can return an error because uh, there's yeah uh, there is no first character in uh, in an empty string basically let's say empty string but uh, um, if uh, now uh, we basically know that okay uh, the string is not empty right because uh, then um then it would have gone into this um, this case, basically, this pattern match. So now we can uh, type out a list, and I can actually type it like this. And this is because um, if I were to do the type of the colon operator, I would get that uh, um, it basically takes an element and a list of elements, and it returns uh, a uh, basically a put-together list. So um, this actually works backwards here. Uh, we actually get the head. Uh, we actually get the head of the string. Uh, so we get one character followed by the tail. And now we could say that um, this is always true, right? This uh, will always be true since uh, we have um, um, since we have the empty list here. We can basically do equals to, and we can do. Uh, the first character of the list or string is, and then we could add our x here. So basically do a list of x, which if we were to load this and do first car, let's do of nothing first. You can see that uh, we would fall into our uh, error. And if I were to do first car of, let's say, hello, I would get... Uh, this is our input, so we, we get the first character of the string is H. Now, uh, a little bit of a neat trick that I can show you. Um, we could do this. The first character, uh, let's say that we did in, and we did, we basically added, uh, we can add our entire list here. And we can do is, so we can do basically like this. Um, if I were to run this, Let's do first car in hello. See that the output would just be the first character in hello is H. But what I could also do, um, I can basically use the, um, I can type at here and um, I can basically uh, name a, a variable, uh, let's say. So let's just say that I, um, I named this all. Um, and now uh, basically all, um, um, all basically takes upon itself um, the entire list in this case. So this I can basically rename to all, and this would work in the same way. If we were to do first car hello, the first character in hello is H. So uh, this is just uh, a bit of a useful tool in very certain situations, but uh, this can actually be quite useful. Uh, but that's the first example. It's uh, not that much pattern matching, uh, but uh, it's a very, very basic use of it, right? Uh, we basically only um, we basically only pattern match for this um, um, for this base case of an empty list. 
So let's go into maybe a more pure way of pattern matching. So um, let's call this a uh, check eight. Uh, and uh, we're basically gonna uh, check if a, um, if a tuple of three values uh, basically has um, basically has an eight in it, and we're gonna return a bool uh, if it has. So it uh, or um, if it has or if it hasn't. So if it has, we're gonna return true, and if it doesn't have an eight, we're gonna return false. So the way that we would pattern match in this case, uh, we would then type out here. So um, similar to this, uh, we did it empty. Now we can type out the tuple, and we can say that okay. So uh, we're looking for an eight in this case. So now I can type that I'm looking for an eight, right? And then I can type a comma. But now, hmm, I'm already looking for an eight here, right? So um, now I don't really care about these values because um, let's say that I did this. Um, the, um, this case, um, oh, um, this case um, would basically only happen um, if all three of these numbers are an eight each. But in this case, uh, we only need to check for one. So here I can actually use the underscore, uh, which is basically a scrap value or uh, basically a, a, a anonymous variable. Um, it's basically, a, a, um, if we, um, if we have, if we have a value uh, that we don't care about, or that is basically uh, useless to us, um, then we can use the underscore uh, to basically, yeah, um, to basically uh, ignore it. And then I can type that we want to return true in this case. And now I can do check eight again. And uh, we've already checked for the first eight. Now I can do the underscore on that one. And do an eight on the next one. And then also uh, ignore the last one again. And here we can return true. And then do the very same thing again. We don't care about the first variable. We don't care about the second. And we also don't care about the third. No, or I mean, we care about the third. We want an eight here. And now we will return true. But uh, what? Um, we also need a base case here, right? Because let's say that we to uh, run this function and check eight of, let's say, a tuple of one, two, and three. It would return an error, right? Non exhaustive patterns in functions or in function check eight. That's because um, it checks all of these and none of them happen. So we're stuck. So we basically need a base case in this, um, in this situation. But uh, let's think about this. Uh, we've already checked all of our numbers. We've checked our first, first and it's not, a, not an eight because then we would return true. We've checked our second, not an eight, and we've checked our third. So now, um, this entire uh, tuple uh, is basically just scrap values for us, right? Because we're only looking for an eight. So I can basically just type one big underscore or basically just one underscore and I can type false here. And if I were to run this now with the same code as before or the same input as before, I would get false. And uh, if I were to type maybe an eight here or an eight here, this would work just fine. Now, uh, one thing that's good to know is, uh, let's say that I remove this um, and I rerun the code and I actually run uh, with um, with an eighth um, in, the out, um, in the input. Um, this will work, but um, as soon as I basically uh, run into a situation uh, which, uh, um, which doesn't have an eighth, uh, this won't work. So uh, always, always use base cases. Uh, you need you need to use a base case. Otherwise, um, otherwise in uh, um, um, otherwise in big um, basically um, big um, big programs, um, it's gonna mess everything up. But yeah, uh, that's in for the or that's it for the second yeah uh, the second video. Um, and I'll see you again with let in in the third installation.